Men have a thing about sheds. Well, what about having your own shooting range? Cool. Paul Hill is a Swarovski pro stalker. So, just one shot on the left-hand target. OK, we'll get in there. He created the Corinium 100 metre range near Sirencester a few years ago, and the facility has opened up a whole range of opportunities, such as zeroing, brushing up, running courses and playing with new kit. It also makes you very popular. Today, Paul is helping a friend and fellow stalker zero his new Mauser. The technique he uses involves a chronograph, which is a speedo for bullets, and an app on his phone. It's an item we use here quite a lot, the chronograph. Um, what it does is it measures the velocity of the bullet leaving the gun. Um, for practical purposes, it doesn't do an awful lot, apart from give you the speed of the round you're using. But what it does allow you to do, allows you to check factory ammunition as well as any home loaded ammunition, the speed it's actually going. If you're using a ballistic uh, calculator of any sort, it allows you to work out the compensation you're likely to need for the, uh, the drop in the bullet over certain distances. A lot of people don't need it, it's more for information than anything else. Fanatical home loaders are big on this sort of thing. It's something we provide at the range as a service anyway, just so people know what speed their rounds are doing. And certain bullets, um, if you drive them too fast, may be prone to break up a little bit too much. So it, it can be essential to making the bullet perform the best. And if you know the speed it's going, you can then tailor the individual load to either make the bullet perform or make it open quicker or hold together slightly longer on impact. Paul is now going to give us a demo of zeroing and setting the ballistic turret on his Swarovski Z6i. Excellent. If you want to read the chronograph, 2,836 feet per second. Two thousand eight hundred and seventy eight. Two thousand eight hundred and eighty five. Okay, first we have to select the correct scope. So that gives us a list of the scopes. This particular model is the Z6i two to twelve by fifty. We have to select the reticle in it. The range of reticles, it's the ballistic turret, so the BT. It gives us a few parameters there. The sight height above the bore, which is the centre of the reticle above the bore, I set at 2 inches. The setting power is on 12. So now we have to select the bullet and the loading, which is a technical part. The load I'm using actually corresponds very similarly with a normal load. So the velocity at measuring point 1, we type in 2875, which was the average. The air pressure, today it's 29.5. It asks you for the temperature, because temperatures make a difference. If we press apply, and there it gives us the date, the, the readings we have. The base reading is at 100 metres. That is obviously zero clicks, that is the base. The next position up, I've set at 200 yards. And it says on the application here, three clicks from the zero position. So we go one, two, three, and we put on the green ring in that position. That gives us the green dot there. The next set from there is six clicks from the green position, which is for a distance of 300 yards. So six clicks, we move on. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we put on the yellow ring in that position. According to the application, for 350 yards, we go a further three clicks on from the last position. So another three clicks and we put on the final ring. If we have an animal that's at 200 metres away from where we are now, we just need to go up to the green position and aim in the correct place, in the same place we normally would. If it's 300 metres away, we go up to the yellow position, and if it's 350 metres or there or thereabouts, a further three clicks. Paul is a shooting nut, and his enthusiasm for the technical side of things is infectious, as John is all too aware. So, I mean, you know, you, you can come here, you can see what's on offer with all the equipment and, you know, unleash the geek, really. Um, you know, you've got the grand geek master up there who will run from the simplest thing, you know, putting a, a, a round over the chronograph so you can put it onto your, your iPod or iPad or whatever. 
then you've got the sort of system where you can just say, I just want to shoot a target. I just, I just want to make little holes in a bit of paper and, you know, learn from there. Um, I came with that principle and now I'm, you know, releasing the geek more often, should we say, because there is so much to learn in rifle shooting. It's such an art. Um, you know, we've been up to places where we shoot out of a thousand yards with various rifles and that's fantastic fun. Um, and to, to have a stalking rifle where you can go out, learn your stuff here, go elsewhere and shoot at longer ranges, you know, it really builds your confidence up. We're nearly finished at the range, but although Paul uses a blazer in 65 by 55 he thinks its stablemate, the Mauser, gets overlooked. So he wants to sing its praises. It just seems a bit of a shame because they are every bit as modular as the blazer rifles. A few months back, um, a, f a colleague and I had a couple at the range to, to actually put them through the paces to see why they'd been overlooked. And we couldn't really understand why. They shot every bit as well as a blazer, if not better. Um, yes, they're heavier than a blazer, but they are more accurate. And uh, as I say, every bit is interchangeable. Time to chase a few deer. Paul takes hundreds off his land and has a thriving venison business. We're hoping to knock over a fallow or two. He and John set up in different high seats. It's a cold one, and Paul talks us through his kit of choice, which of course includes Swarovski. There's some pretty harsh conditions out here. You know, it's raining, it's windy, it's cold. We had a very bad snow spell last year. Um, we don't give up for the weather. We're out here every single week of the, of the year virtually, certainly through the cold season. We need to get numbers, and we need to know we've got kit that can stand up to the job. Hence the rifles I use and the kit I use. Unfortunately, it's a quiet one and we head back to the chiller to see some of the beasts Paul has taken in the last few days. His specially branded venison is proving popular with local pubs, restaurants and people who just like something a bit special on their plate. We're all signed off by the local authority. We can, we can skin them here. We don't actually process any of the meat here. We just skin the carcasses. The butcher picks them up in a refrigerated van, takes them back and they come back to us however we want them. These are, he individually packs the steaks if we have steaks done for, for sale for people. That's a nice little rump steak and that's going to work out something around the four quid mark. Um, you won't buy beef for that kind of money and that's that's as natural as it comes. For more information about Paul Hill, his courses, guided stalking and the range, or you just want some venison, go to www.carinianrange.com. For more about Swarovski's range of optics, visit www.swarovskioptic.com.